Hi, this is Stephen Chin, and we're doing a night hacking interview talking about cloud DevOps and growth hacking with Lauren Schaefer. So welcome. Thank You're you. a software developer at IBM? Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm going to start with the second topic, because I'm sure people want to know. So what is, what is growth hacking? So growth hacking means to rapidly grow your user base as quickly as possible with basically no budget. So it's, it's a concept that started out in the startup world, and we're starting to see it everywhere from startups all the way to big enterprises like IBM. OK, so um, when you first hear about hacking, mm -hmm. you, you would assume that you're breaking into people's servers to steal their user base? Yes, uh, my mom is actually convinced that I'm doing something illegal, uh, so she is not a big fan of the term growth hacking. Um, but basically, we're hacking user growth, not hacking into people's computers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you're in good company, because this is night hacking. <laughs> so you're not doing anything illegal here, either? Um, not presently. OK, good. I can't speak for other times. So um, how, do you, how do you actually quickly grow the, the user base? Are there any like tips or tricks or things which you do which are um, not, not well known? So there are a variety of ways that people try to go about growth hacking. Um, you come to conferences like this. You talk with developers. Uh, we do a lot of blogs and videos and developer outreach. I think one of the coolest things we do is A-B testing. So we'll go and create two variations of our home page and say which one causes our users to, to actually stay, which one causes users to log in, and then which one causes users to log in over the long haul. So it's a lot about analyzing the metrics and figuring out what's going to do the best thing for our particular website. OK, so you know, random users might try to go to the website and they would see get an entirely different experience. Typically, we do very small variations, because yeah. then it's easier to get a statistical uh, a result. OK, what, what's an example of like a, a typical um, a, B comparison, like what would you change between the two versions of the website? Uh, so something very simple is we have a, a register button on our home page. So mm -hmm. we ran an experiment last year where we had three different variations of the text. So we would say, register now, sign up today, sign up for free. And surprisingly, you can get a statistical difference just based on that just small change. Just with enough users, a little change like mm -hmm. that will have a big impact. Mm -hmm. So which one won? <laughs> Whatever's live right now. <laughs> okay, so we just we just go to your website and we get good information about what should happen because we know you've done the research. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, and I, I think we're we're effectively um, moving forward your growth hacking by having you doing interviews here in yes. front of a live audience with thousands of people here at the J Focus conference. Um, so we should talk about the other topic: cloud okay. DevOps. Yes. So that. That almost sounds like an oxymoron. Does it? OK. <laughs> so I think DevOps and the cloud actually go together really well. Yeah, OK, that's good. So you're going you're gonna to prove <laughs> me wrong. So what, what sort of tools or how do you, um, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming this means a lot of your development is actually moving into the cloud. Yes. So it's a little surprising, because uh, developers are always a little afraid of the idea of coding in their browser and yeah. developing for the cloud. And that's actually what we're creating, is we have a uh, web browser where you can go in, you can code, you can make your changes, and then you can deploy it to the cloud and see it running live. And it all happens right there on your computer. OK, so you're, well, so this is kind of like, I'm, I'm old school. Okay. Very old school. So this is kind of like a mainframe where you log in. To <laughs> you might be too old school for All me. All right, a little bit too old school. All right, so what sort of like IDEs and development paradigms can you support in the cloud? Is it, is it like a full-featured modern IDE? It's, I think it's really great. It's very modern um, right now. Better, better than just command line, character yes. letter, 80 characters by 23? I know there are a lot of people here who probably are still very hardcore about the command line, but I really like a nice GUI. Um, it works really well with Node.js and scripted languages, and nice. we're going to be expanding it, uh, hopefully, to, to other languages as well. So one, one of the things people in the Agile community care a lot about is um, cycle time. Mm -hmm. 
for being able to quickly make changes and see the results of it. So how does cloud deployment affect your um, developer productivity? I, th I think it makes it a lot easier. So you can actually deploy into the environment that your production environment will, it, it's identical to the production environment. So you can have a staging environment identical to your production environment, push your changes to that staging environment, and you know exactly what you're going to see. There aren't any surprises between the staging environment and the production environment. Yeah, OK. So typically, if you were developing offline or on a, uh, a replica of production, there would be bigger differences. And mm -hmm. since you have the same infrastructure in the cloud, mm -hmm. it's closer to what you're actually going to be deploying to. How about working with teams? How does it work out when you have like a large group of people collaborating on an application in the cloud? So what's nice is then you, when you're in the cloud, you've got all of that traceability online for you. So you, you can always go back and reference that. Um, you also get, you can make comments and work items is our term for like a, a user story or a defect. Um, so you're getting all of that traceability and you can work in different time zones easily and, and all of that's recorded for you. Okay, would you share a common staging environment or everyone have their own sandbox, which? So typically when you're developing, you'd probably have your own environment and then when you're ready to go in your changes or you're comfortable with your changes, you're gonna push them to your code repository which would automatically trigger a deployment to the staging environment. OK, so one of the other hot Agile topics is continuous deployment. Mm -hmm. So do you have any folks using the cloud environments to um, facilitate continuous deployment to production? Yeah, and it's one of the really great things that you can check out. Um, I don't know if I've, I've plugged our, our URL yet. So it's hub.jazz.net. And you can go on there and set up continuous deployments. We've got a really great deployment pipeline that can trigger as soon as a user, someone on your team pushes code to your project's repository, it'll automatically trigger that pipeline, run your unit test for you. If the build passes, it can push it on to the next level of your, your pipeline. Cool. And then if you had any um, issues with the push out, can you um, reverse the deployment to get back to a previous version? Yeah, you can always redeploy an older build. Cool. So um, when you're working with folks who are building stuff for the cloud environment, how does um, their experience differ from a developer who's developing using a traditional IDE? What sort of changes do you see in the, in the teams or the, the individual developers? That is a good question. Uh, probably just that they're, they're going to be working faster. You're thinking, how can I rapidly push this out to my users? You're getting that user feedback quickly, and you're pushing it back out. Possibly doing A-B testing on different versions of your application? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, OK, so maybe to help folks who are watching the live stream, I can, I can pop up some of the, um, the websites for the cloud tools at IBM so That'd folks have references that they can look back at. Um, so give me just a sec, and we will get, uh, here we are. We will get a new local uh, view of the browser. And is this a good website that I should be looking at, Bluemix? Yep. And so the URL is bluemix.net. And Bluemix is a cloud-based open standards platform for building, managing, and running apps of all types. All right, so I'm just making sure that people are going to actually see your website and um, not be reading my personal mail when, <laughs> I, when I pop this up, which may or may not actually work, but we'll give it a try anyway. And for, users who, for people here at the conference, if you go to bluemix.net and sign up here, um, you can sign up for a GoPro. We've got a contest over oh. at the IBM booth. All right, I think we have a winner. OK, so we're at the Bluemix site now. Yep. Where, where's the, where's the, oh, okay, sign up was the winner. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, so, so the, um, the product that I work on specifically and do the A-B testing is DevOps Services. So can we give people that URL as well? Okay. Uh, DevOps. Not, yep. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see if that comes up. We got tweets. 
All right, so let's go to the URL straight. It's hub.jazz.net. There we go. Yep, so get started for free is what won our little experiment. Cool. And I could sign up for the service right now. Yep. OK, so that's excellent. Now people know how to access the service. They know a little bit about cloud deployment, things which possibly they didn't know previously mm -hmm. um, and are willing to give it a try. And about growth hacking. That's right. <laughs> All right, so thanks very much for your time, Lauren. It was very enlightening to chat with you. Um, and we're going to be doing additional interviews later today. Um, we have the party coming up later this evening where we're going to talk about the forgotten bytes, um, some of the Java features which over the past 20 years people may not remember. And I believe we have one more interview coming up in another hour as well. Um, so please join us for that follow-up interview, and thanks very much for your time, Lauren. Thank you.